Tyler Cronin, three bid league coach. Is that what you meant by mud wrestling? <laughs> you know, it's funny because we played pretty good offense for a while. I just felt like we got a little bit tired. Um, they picked it up a little bit as well. Um, you know, you're not going to win too many games when you shoot 29%. Is that what we shot for the game? I think we shot 29%. But we offensive rebounded at a high level and we defended at a high level. And if you do that every single night, you have a chance to win. You know, you, if you try to outscore people, it doesn't always work out for you because you're going to have some bad offensive nights. But it's hard to win four games in four days. And it's hard to play great offense when you're a little bit beaten down and tired. We probably didn't play our bench enough uh, either night, and that probably hurt us a little bit. But it was hard because we played from in front the whole game. You know, I think if it was a little bit closer, I probably would have played the bench a little bit, a little bit more. We'll stay in the la in that corner in the last row now. Sam Basil, House of College Hoops. Coach, uh, Danny kind of touched on it, but you know, on social media today, a lot of people were talking about you know stories about the last time Duquesne was in the tournament. You know, what that, how long it's been in, in that gap. Could you talk about you know for those fans that have been here for a long time, what this what this means for them and how you're give, getting the message out to them? Um, so when Dave Harper, our athletic director, came and asked me if. I would be interested in the job. Um, my main question was, how badly do you want to win? Because I really wasn't going to leave my hometown where I had a pretty good situation if they really didn't want to win. And so uh, Dave did an unbelievable job of uh, rallying Duquesne, the administration, and then had unbelievable presidential support from Ken Gormley, our president and our board of trustees, um, and he convinced me that they really cared about winning. And so, uh, and he also, I also lost two, two straight championship games in Akron, and my son transferred to Pitt for soccer, so I figured, what the hell, we all might as well come. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew it was gonna be really challenging, because this league is, this is a tough league, right? There's a lot of great coaches, got Hall of Fame guys like Fran Dumpy and Bob McKellip was in the league and I was son and Frank Martin and Archie Miller been all the way through the NCAA tournament. So I knew it was going to be difficult, but I knew that Dave was serious about winning and the school was serious about winning. And again, I had the ties because of my dad. And I, you know, I, I, I was proud of the school because of how progressive it was when my dad was here. And I just kept hearing in my head, well, you know, my dad's sick of seeing Duquesne losing. And he was still alive at the time. So I said, oh, what the heck, why not? We'll take next two on this on this wall, and then we'll come down here front row. Go ahead. Keith, the buzzer goes off, the clock is zero. What's going through your head in that moment to realize that you've overcome everything that the season has given you to do this? Um, you know, it's been a difficult year, really, quite honestly. It's been a it's been a difficult tenure. Uh, look, I've lost more games than I've ever lost in my life two years ago. Um, I lost my dad along the way. My wife got breast cancer. Um, it's been hard, you know, but I felt relaxed the whole game. I don't know whether it's because I'm 65 and I'm, you know, not going to coach till I'm 100, but I've been in a lot of championship games. I, I think we were seven in a row at Akron. We lost some of those. I, I thought I was much tighter in those games than I was in this game. Um, and I thought the whole tournament I was relatively calm. I just got to the point where I just said, heck, it's time to just enjoy the moment. And it's hard when you're a young coach and you're trying to move up and you're trying to win, and you're trying to get to the tournament. Um, but I thought it was much easier as a 65-year-old old guy than it was when I was younger. Stay on that wall. Go ahead. Coach, how important was uh, Netches' as a game today off the bench? He had a huge, a pretty big game, eight points, I think. How, how, what did you see out of his performance and what he's done all season? Um, that guy is a really good player. And he's just scratching the surface. And he's an unbelievable kid. His work ethic is second to none. He's in there, him and Matush are in there every single day, uh, hour before practice. And um, early in the year, he had trouble making shots. But he's really good defensively. He's a good team defender. He knows how to play. Um, and with Trey Williams out, you know, he, he gave us a huge lift. I mean, he played really, really well. But it doesn't surprise me. He deserves what he got. Um, and again, 
just a wonderful young man. So I'm happy for him. Come across the room onto this side here in the front row. Keith uh, Jack Horn of Duquesne Eastern Television. So you guys, at one point, I mean, after the confetti fell, I mean, it seemed like things were really, it was mud wrestling from that point on. How are the games after that 0-5 start where you guys were able to just grind out wins? Those games kind of help prepare you for later down the road in games like this? There's no question about that. I think, I think you know, I didn't realize we didn't score for 500 minutes. <laughs> I just looked at the scoreboard. I didn't really keep track. I felt like we got good shots. We just missed. We had a bunch of easy ones around the rim. They, they contested a couple. We had some bad luck. We missed open threes. You know, um, I had to laugh when Day Day missed the free throw. I actually chuckled to myself because he's the greatest free throw shooter in the world. So I'm thinking, you know, just shows you how crazy this game is, right? And um, I guess I'd be like Messi missing a penalty kick or something like that. <laughs> you know, the same type of thing. You know, so I, you know, I just just try to stay the course, just like I did all year. You know, and I think. Uh, I think we're, again, like I'm, I'm fairly experienced, so I just try to stay calm because they're going to feed off of your anxiety or your calmness, and it doesn't do any good to get anxious or tense or scream and yell, which I've, I've done my share of my time, but I just didn't think it was the right moment in this tournament. Let's say on this side in row two again. Go ahead. Uh, Tristan Freeman and Buster Brackets. Coach, one of the changes that was made after the 6 24 season was uh, Drew Joyce coming in as the associate head coach. Since then, back to back 20 win seasons and now 8 10 tournament, ranking up the top in the defensive categories. Just how much credit do you give him for the turnaround for the program? And, and do you feel like he's someone that could potentially be the next head coach for you game whenever you feel like it's time for you to move on? You're like, I'm glad we enjoy the moment. You're just <laughs> <laughs> kicking my ass out already. <laughs> um, look, Drew and I have won a lot of games together. Like, we won two state championships together. Uh, I probably wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here sitting here right now if he had decided to go to St. V. Um, you know, he's a tough, hard-nosed guy with a big brain. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have some really good coaches with me. Shaka Smart was with me at Akron. Lamont Paris, who just signed a $4 million contract a year, was with me. He was at South Carolina. Jeff Bowles, the coach at Ohio U. And Drew's, Drew's going to be a top-level coach. Now, we have a lot of good coaches on our staff. Rick McFadden, uh, Terry Wigand, all of them. Ari Stern did an unbelievable job. Andy Allison, they all did a great job. But Drew has had a really good effect on our program. And you know, when I made the move, um, it was a it was a difficult it was a difficult decision because guys had been with me a long long time, and I brought him here because I thought he could really help us, you know. And he evidently he has right. We won uh, we won 44 games in two years. So um, Drew's a winner. He's been a winner his whole life. He's an overachiever. You know, he's just a little guy. When I first met him, I call him Little Drew. He gets mad at me. He's, he's almost 40 years old now. So. So to answer your question, uh, when and if I ever go, I think he'd be a great head coach at Duquesne. And I think Duquesne wouldn't miss a beat. Maybe probably be better. We'll stay on this side on the aisle in row three, and then we'll come back across. Go ahead, row three. Uh, coach, what was going through your head cutting down the nets? It's been quite a t some time since you've had that opportunity. What was going through your head cutting down the nets? You know, just happy for my family and our players and the fans, you know, and Dave Harper and uh, Ken Gormley, you know, all the people that stuck with me when things weren't going great, you know, uh, our players for sure, because they, they battled through this and really became a, a good team. So, you know, you get kind of nostalgic. I thought about my dad and my mom, you know, when I thought we had a game won, which for us, it's never won. We find some kind of ways to, mess around but you know that's what happens when you get old you start thinking about everything go across the way same row three at the end coach congratulations i know there's been a lot of talk about the past 47 years for uh, duquesne basketball but i really want to ask you about uh, the past year you know you had the 20 win season last year uh, you lose the rice in the first round of the cbi 
and uh, nearly a year to the day, you're sitting up here, A10 champions. Was there anything that comes to mind? Was there any turning point for you uh, in the past 365 days? Say the last part again. Was there any turning point uh, between losing to Rice in the CBI last year and you know winning the A10 championship today? Was there any moment that you said, hey, this is really clicking? Or? Well, I think, you know, we're much better defensively than we were last year. Um, I thought we did a much better job towards the end of this year moving the ball than we did at the end of last year. I just think we, we learned how to win. I thought last year's team was really good at a point, and then RJ Gunn was a little beat up at the end, and uh, Joe Reese was beat up. Brewer was hurt all year. So we really, didn't, we, we really didn't get the best performance we could get by the end of the year. We were a little beaten down. Uh, whereas this team played really good at the end of the year. And we actually had a, you know, two weeks ago, we had a preparation for the A-10 tournament because we were gone for five days. You know, we played at George Mason. We busted George Mason. And then we stayed and played at DCU. So we were gone five days. So I thought this team was built pretty good for the tournament. You know, because we have good depth. We have good... We have really high character guys, like, and we're old, you know. But our young guys are good. Like that's a that's the interesting part about the team. So uh, probably a little bit tighter knit, but not all the way. Like I thought they were pretty tight knit last year. I just didn't think we went into the tournament playing great last year. That's all. Take one more question if there is one. Go here on the aisle. That's a good teammate there. You could have you could have hogged that microphone. True. Nice dish. That's the kind of guy you should play for me. <laughs> Hi, um, Jackson Warren from WRHU. Coach, um, with 18 rebounds from the offense, was that one of the main functions of clutching up the win tonight? Oh, today. When you can't throw in the ocean, they're offensive rebounder, right? So, <laughs> You know, it's funny because I didn't realize how many rebounds Fusini Drame had, and I did notice he, he got to the offensive boards. I didn't, I didn't think he had a particularly great game for him, but he made some big plays again when it mattered. And uh, that's one thing about Fusini and Jakob, they go after the ball hard. You know, and uh, I thought that was key, especially when you don't shoot the ball particularly well. If you had told me Jimmy Carp was going to go 2 for 17 and we were going to win, I would have told you you were crazy. But one thing I will tell you is Jimmy Clark asked me before the game, uh, as we were walking a walkthrough this morning, he said, uh, Coach, uh, can I? And I said, yes. And he said, can I guard Max Shulka? And again, that's Jimmy. So Jimmy only has trouble defensively, but he's disengaged and he's bored. When he wants to guard, he can guard anybody in the country. And he did an unbelievable job on him. And we did a good job as a team on him. So, but that's Jim. Jim's capable doing those type of things. Okay, coach, we appreciate you taking